340 Nords is a very small studio, indie studio based in Germany, um, with four employees right now uh, and 10 more contractors working constantly on Project Z Beyond Order. Project Z Beyond Order is an atmospheric first-person zombie co-op shooter set in World War II with uh, base building elements. The main goal for the game was really to create something different because most of the zombie games are pretty much the same. So what we did is we tried to mix multiple game design ideas from other games in the zombie genre. There is also some that offers base building but not a lot of other um, shooting mechanics. So we thought, okay, maybe we, we mix those and then we have a great game design in general for Project Z. The biggest technical challenge for us was getting the, the lighting right. Unity offers a lot of stuff already out of the box. So the main goal then was to just make everything look great with the tools that we have. We took multiple steps to, to overcome the lighting challenges. The first one was basically to, to check out what options we have. Um, should we use the adaptive probe volumes? Should we go into baked lighting? Or should we use the screen space global illumination? We later then decided because the game is fully real-time and we needed this, this real-time global illumination, we decided to go and choose the screen space global illumination. And from there it was more like an iterative process of going back and forth um, and check out if everything looks exactly as we wanted it to be. HRP was helpful with multiple multiple things. For example, the screen space global illumination helps us a lot. And it's also the most performant way if you look, for example, for other options on the asset store. We think that the screen space global illumination from Unity had the best performance in our opinion. We made some, some smaller tests, so we used that one. And with, without it, uh, I think the game would look way worse. One of the main aspects where the profiler helped us a lot was uh, finding out that the shadow performance was the main issue in our project since we're kind of always GPU bound in our project. So we looked at the profiler, we saw what the issue was, and just after seeing what the profiler told us, uh, we created our own shadow performance tool to get rid of the issue of the shadows. And that was one thing that saved us a lot of time. It gave us 50% more performant uh, lighting, and that was basically just caused by using the profiler, seeing what the issue is and basically executing. The timeline was super helpful for us. I mean, um, we used the, the timelines for our cinematics in the game between every missions. And even the basic features like, for example, activating lights or animating them accordingly so you have nice artificial lights. It's just beautiful and it helped us a lot together with all the other things that we built. We used that a lot. Um, even though we have, of course, the moon, the sun, and the, the normal props that also uh, illuminate the world. But sometimes you have that dark little spot that you still want to light up a little bit more, and then we use artificial lights for it. And I think this is really a key point of getting to the visuals that we have right now. I think what is the most exciting thing about ray tracing is that it is, of course, real time. I think every developer just loves iterating as fast as possible. And it's, of course, also super beautiful to see everything super clean, super clear. It's just awesome. And that's the reason why we also look into implementing ray tracing later on. We just want to focus right now on screen space reflections and then we really want to go in to ray tracing because it's such a beautiful technique that we also want to use.